Hi everyone, uh, Patek here. So for today's video, this will be about uh, the best books of the year so far for the first quarter of the year. I experimented around this kind of video last year and it did well and many of you said that uh, you, you would prefer for me to do this kind of video uh, always every year. So yeah, I think I will do that again this year. So from the month of January until the month of March, I managed to read uh, 13 novels, uh, 2 novellas and then eight short stories, one novelette, and also 110 volumes of manga. Yeah, I know. I know that's a lot of manga volumes, but I think I was just in a big mood for reading some of my favorite manga series, and I did that. So even though I wasn't able to read a lot of novels, I mean 13 novels compared to a lot of booktubers, that's probably a month of reading for a lot of booktubers. For me, well, that's three months now because, well, creating content takes a lot of time and also now I work a part-time as an art director for some broken branding projects as some of you might know already like Malazan, Book of the Fallen and some unannounced projects. But yeah, as always, this list will only include a new books that I read for the first time uh, within this year. So from the month of January until the month of March, no reread will be included into the equation. So before we start talking about the novels, uh, the best manga that I read, the best new manga that I managed to read up to the end, it is Noragami by Adachi Toka. If you love Japanese mythology, great storytelling on the concept of fate and also found family, this manga will be for you. I think Adachi Toka illustration is beautiful. And although this is not really the first time I read through uh, Noragami, but this is the first time I managed to read it to the end because the first time I read through Noragami, the manga wasn't finished yet, but now it is completed. And the ending, although I would have preferred one more chapter, it is still very satisfying. So Noragami by Adachi Toka will take the spot for the best manga that I read in the first quarter. Now let's talk about novels. At the number 5 spot, I have Coraline by Neil Gaiman. I have been a fan of the animated uh, movie adaptation of Coraline for, well, many years now. But this is the first time I finally decided to read uh, the novella, which I actually didn't know that Coraline is a novella. But yeah, it is a novella and I really love this. Surprisingly, I was a bit apprehensive that I would not like this one as much as the movie, but I did love this one maybe even more than the movie adaptation. And by, by the way, the movie adaptation is coming back this year, I think, in theater. So if you haven't watched Coraline yet, well, you might be able to watch it uh, really soon. It's really good. But if you decide not to watch the movie adaptation, I think uh, the novel itself is still, the novella itself is still pretty good. It is satisfying. It's 200 pages long. Uh, this Coraline uh, Lyra edition is 200 pages long, but I don't think that page count accurately uh, depicted the length of the novella because it is short. You can probably finish this in about uh, two hours. But yeah, I love this one. Coraline is a great character to root for and somehow the novella felt whimsical, dark as well. And I believe this is the kind of story that can be enjoyed by children, young adult and adult as well. For now, this is my favorite book by Neil Gaiman. And moving on to the next two books. Yeah, two books because I believe they are both equally good. And I gave the both of them the same ratings. 4.5 out of 5 stars rating, just like Coraline uh, as well. But in the case of these two books, they are some of my favorite books of the year so far for very different reasons, even total opposite. So let's start from the first one. And it is... Uh, the Doll Makers by Lynn Buchanan. I just got this uh, physical copy actually of today. And yeah, this is a debut novel. The book is not out yet. I think this one will be out in August, if I'm not mistaken. But this one, the main strength of the Doll Makers is the characterizations. Yeah, the main character, it's one of the main characters in the Doll Makers is absolutely insufferable for pretty much the first half of the doll makers and I bet many readers will feel pissed about it. I mean, I was pissed at the main characters for quite a while. I mean, this is pretty much intentional. It is meant to be that way. I would be surprised if many people actually like a Xian for the first half of the doll makers. But even though I was infuriated most of the time with one of the main characters in the doll makers, 
I still couldn't help but turn the pages. I found this book to be uh, very compelling and the magic system is interesting. And thankfully, even though Sean is very unbearable for, well, quite a while, one of the main characters is a different story. I really love reading the perspective of the other main character. The other main character is a reclusive and very well-respected doll maker, and the name is Iki Isa. I love Iki Isa, her relationship uh, with her dolls, and also experiencing the contrast between Sean and also Iki Isa, and well, everything about the doll makers kind of reminded me of experiencing the dark fantasy story of Studio Ghibli movies. And if you love Full Metal Alchemist, well, the author Lynn Buchanan is a huge fan of Full Metal Alchemist uh, Brotherhood, of course, because Brotherhood is better than the original uh, Full Metal Alchemist. And you can definitely see the inspiration playing a part in the magic system. And I love this one, even though this is marketed as a standalone novel. But I do not think this will be the only novel in the series. There will be more books in the series uh, for sure. I think, who knows, maybe this will be a series of standalone novels. But yeah, everything about the Dollmakers was really good for me. It was super compelling. And also, I can say with confidence that this is one of the nominees for the best fantasy debut of 2024 for me. And the next one is pretty much the same uh, situation. But this is for the failures by Benjamin Lyer. So this one has been very well praised by plenty of authors such as Ted Williams and also Christopher Rocchio. And just like the Dollmakers, I have posted a full spoiler review of uh, The Failures. Even though I understand why the title of the book is The Failures, I still think that there would be a better title for this book. But anyway, this is a great story. It is hard to describe everything about this book because this is a blend of multiple genre into one science fantasy book. It has horror, post-apocalypse, fantasy, epic fantasy, and sci-fi. To be honest, it is brilliant. It is brilliant how the author, well, combined and melded everything into this one distinct word of art. And I know that Benjamin Lyer has mentioned in the acknowledgement portion of the failures that he has taken a lot of inspirations from so many uh, legendary authors such as Glenn Cook, Ted Williams, and also Ursula K. Le Guin, and also a manga series, uh, Blame by Suto Munihei and many other authors. But the failures, the result is something that is so different from so many books that I have read. It is unique, and also the theme of redemption, vengeance, ambition, and found family, all of them are reflected well in the narrative. I love this one. And again, just like the Dollmakers, this one is not out yet. I think this one will be out in the month of July. But please, please consider this one into your radar because even though I know that this one will not, it will not be a hit with a lot of readers, in my opinion, because the, the, the narrative itself is quite demanding. It will take a lot of concentration to figure out the unconventional uh, narrative and timeline. But at the same time, I do think that if you are a reader who feels that epic fantasy lately have been uh, too easy to read and also not rewarding enough, I think the failures will be for you. The world building is absolutely impressive and one of the best strengths of the entire uh, narrative in the failures. I am so looking forward to reading the sequel whenever it's ready. But for now, I would just say, just like the Dollmakers, this is certainly one of the best fantasy debut of 2024. I will have to make up my mind regarding which one will be the best debut of the year. But anyway, speaking of Christopher Rocchio earlier, then you might have predicted that from this empty space in my background, that the next two books are, well, written by Christopher Rocchio. And at the number two spot, this is The Ashes of Man by Christopher Rocchio, the fifth book in the Sun Eater series. And I'm, I'm going to start reading this quiet guts after I finish recording this video. And this one, well, it is an emotional damage. Unlike the previous books in the series like Howling Dark, Demon in White, and Kingdoms of Death, there is no huge time jump after Kingdoms of Death to Ashes of Man here. Kingdoms of Death and Ashes of Man was originally supposed to be one big book, but it has been divided into two novels. So yeah, this is the fifth novel of the series and the story happens immediately after the end of Kingdoms of Death. But I love this one as expected. I love every book in the Sun Eater series. But this one, there are some events here that, uh, that were some of the most emotional that I have ever experienced in the entire series, and that is saying a lot. I'm talking specifically about what happens in the Battle of Perfugium. It is an epic battle, emotional, 
and also Christopher Rocchio just keeps getting better and better with each book at least on technical level his writing well let's just say that every time I read his books every time I read his writing I feel like it is it is a blessing for me to be able to read his books and I get that from reading the ashes of man the ending here really makes me excited to read uh, this quite gods really soon and I talk earlier about my statistic right my reading statistics I mentioned uh, two novellas and also one novelette and uh, eight short stories pretty much all of that are Sun Eater books Tales of the Sun Eater volume 3 and then the Drags of Empire but yeah my point stands this is the runner up spot and you can probably predict what's my number one book uh, for the first quarter of the year so far and it is Kingdoms of Death by Christopher Rocchio yeah this is the fourth book in the series the darkest installment in the entire series so far and as time goes by i think i need to consider this as a masterpiece in science fantasy it is just too good i cannot remember when was the last time before this book well it is demon in white but before demon in white when was the last time i was so compelled to read the book until 5 a.m this book did that for me the battle sequence, the final climax sequence of Kingdoms of Death made me read the book non-stop for I think two or three hours. The Red Company Discord group will remember this. It was absolutely brutal and I could not stay away from watching the events, the insane events unfolding before my eyes. And Kingdoms of Death reminded me of the golden age of Berserk by Kentaro Miura and I'm not saying that lightly Berserk by Kentaro Miura is really one of my favorite stories of all time I have read that manga series uh, so many times now and I will keep on doing that in the future and Kingdoms of Death is one of the very few uh, novels that managed to remind me of the experience of reading the Golden Age again for the first time especially the Eclipse portion but that's really it Kingdoms of Death is really that brilliant every book in the Sun Eater is amazing in my opinion I truly believe that sooner or later the Sun Eater series will be hailed as one of the sci-fi classics in the future it is just that good and Kingdoms of Death will be responsible for that as well. But anyway, I have talked a lot about this. If you want to know my full thoughts regarding all the books that I mentioned in today's list, I have posted a full detailed spoiler-free review of each of these books on my YouTube channel. But yeah, my number one pick for the best book that I read within uh, this year so far for the first quarter of the year, it is Kingdoms of Death by Christopher Rocchio. And this, I think there is a really good chance uh, unless this quite got top this one but there is a really good chance this will appear in my top five books of the year uh, this year and that's well there's a lot of heavy competition coming up this year with uh, the fury of the gods and also uh, win and truth and maybe the strength of the few which is the sequel to the will of the many so the competition is heavy but i have no doubt that Kingdoms of Death or Disquiet Gods will be one of the best books i read this year in the top five books and yeah that's really uh the best books that i read within the first quarter of 2024 do let me know uh what you think about my list uh this year uh, which one uh of the books that i mentioned have you read and which one is the best book that you read in the first quarter uh of the year i will be back again uh with the best book that i've read in the year so far probably in the month of july and yeah i think that's really pretty much it from today the next video that i will post uh, will be sff spotlight if you are waiting for my book haul video uh, you might have to wait a bit longer for that but yeah we will see maybe i will post that after my sff spotlight video so yeah that's the end of today's video as always thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support bye bye lastly i want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons who keep on supporting me